Welcome to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, where world-changing spiritual entrepreneurs come to deeply awaken the power within to bring forth their greatest purpose, to create massive awakened impact for millions of souls around the planet, while enjoying being in tune with all life and real wealth in all aspects of their lives. I'm your host, Daniel John Hanneman. And welcome everybody to the Spiritual Rockstar Podcast show. Oh my God, this is an amazing day, guys. You got to celebrate every day. Don't let all the noise of the world confuse you, no matter how loud the noise is. It's like, no, everything's all going bad. Everything's, uh, you're going to die tomorrow. You're, you're enslaved. You're not, 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 not. I don't feel pretty free still myself. So you just got to keep moving through the nonsense and all that stuff and to deepen your relationship with source and the relationship with God, whatever you call it that and deepen your relationship with others in your life okay we've got an expert on that today deepening your connection your depth of connection and intimacy with your partner and your relationships i'm sure overall we're going to talk about that and we're going to do the energy scanning with her to help her with her uh, her business so uh can dana um i'm just so grateful to have you here today thank you it's it's so good to be here thank you (laughs) all right so a uh, true spiritual rock star, I'll tell you, she's, uh, 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 you'll learn about that through this. Uh, we're all spiritual rock stars in our way. You're going to learn about that in this bio here in a big way. So Kandena uh, Kay is a relationship coach who facilitates breakthroughs for those exhausted and disappointed from not experiencing the relationship joy they crave. She is a veteran worship leader musician and licensed minister. So we're talking about, yes, yeah, train that relationship with source. I forgot already that she's a licensed minister. Um, and Dana uh, has earned certification in Elijah House and the Fostics, Fostics, I should say, <laughs> inner healing modalities as a health coach and as a John Maxwell team speaker, trainer, and coach. She is the mother of 10 children and has been homeschooled schooling for over 35 years. This alone brings her into sainthood for me, okay? Her husband of 38 years, Johnny, passed away in 2021. Kandena uh, lives in Olathe. 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 Okay. (laughs) Kansas, uh, where uh, she continues to homeschool her two youngest children so she still has kids at home and uh so that is wow i mean just how how amazing that is how powerful that is and um yeah just i just i just i'm just like blown away by by you just with with those things alone so kandina um so let's yeah let's talk a little bit a little bit about what uh you know, you do this deeper work with people, deep relationship work with people. Uh, is your business, we're going to talk about your business, get into um, your energy and your mission, your purpose here, you know, as it relates to the business later and whatever else wants to come through, maybe some strategy and stuff that other people can listen to and gain from as well today. But to start with, let's talk about the work you do. Um, you're John Maxwell, affiliated trainer and everything. And I know that's a, a foundation, at least, of what you do. Um, but first, what brought you in to this work? Like, what called you into doing this deep relationship work with people? Mm, I think it's sort of by doing the deep work with myself. I had an epiphany when my oldest son was in sixth grade and we were just butting heads all the time. And I call, I would call my husband frequently and I would be like, your son doesn't respect me. (laughs) And like, you know, just vomiting into the phone. And one day my husband was like, Dana, respect gets to be earned. And I was like, oh my goodness, (laughs) like dagger to the heart, right? And that started me on a journey of doing the work myself. And it's just evolved as I've done the work myself and gone through the different trainings and modalities and begun to facilitate inner healing for other people. It's just led one thing to another. And as life does, it it evolves and unfolds, right? Do you want to meditate and make money? Let it be simple. Let it be easy. Let it be fun. Go to yoursacredpurpose.com and get your free meditate, make money meditation today. 
Wow. So, so authentically, it just, it sounds very organic. Like you're just, wow, you got called out a bit there and you're like, oh, maybe I do need to work on myself. So it took you on that journey. And then once you did that, you're like, wow, the benefit I could bring to other people is what I'm sensing it happened for you. And you're like, I want to help other people with this. And then the rest is history, as they say, and continue evolving uh, right. right now. But um, that's that's so cool when it happens that way. I mean, you know, we all got our reasons why we get into the work we do. And um, yeah, I'm tempted to go into my story. But uh, yeah, basically, it's like, hey, we're all infinite power. We all can tune in. We all can thrive. We can all prosper. It's kind of a foundation of everything I do. And um, there's so many things that brought me into my work as well. But it's like, yeah, like having that genuine struggle, like for me and in, in business and seeing my parents do well, but also struggle in their businesses as well. Like, what are the keys? Like, are we marketing enough? Are we selling enough? Are we doing, you know, like, you know, it gets you, but you know, we, it's like you're caring for kids, but kids like me anyway, you know, look at like our, our parents, like, how can I help them? How can I help them be better? <laughs> right? right? It's interesting. Well, my, the son I was telling you about, my oldest son, he is, he's in his thirties and he mm -hmm. is a marketing and a life coach. He's Yes, you know, yes. Kind of top of his game. He actually has mentored me and helped me yes, in my yes. business, right? So it's pretty yeah, cool. We may have him on. I think I, I don't know. I, I don't know if we've set up a time to talk yet, but I like to have him on. He's really awesome. I could tell. So, so anyway, so you had this. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, just yeah, having uh, kids of your own and uh, right, and then kids that he had from a previous what marriage or relationship is no, it, nothing no? All, no they're all ours they're all <laughs> ours okay all ours <laughs> yep. oh you just said you just said it that way that your child <laughs> right that's why okay, I said now, it right. now we got one of those could right. be my child doing this this is your child <laughs> exactly he was my child <laughs> <laughs> okay that's so funny um yeah, now I'm wondering which one it was, if it was him or not. But uh, okay, <laughs> probably, probably it probably was, probably wasn't. Who knows? So uh, anyway, yeah, kids. Wow, I mean, kids could be the biggest. Uh, our partners and then all these intimate, close relationships talk about a, an opportunity to grow and expand if we're willing to allow it to be so, rather than because usually what happens with relationships where people don't want to grow and expand is I'm right, you're wrong. I hope you'll change. Like, right, right. right. The, 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 if you don't change, I'm out of here. <laughs> right, right. And until, yeah, yeah. And the threat's on the table. Yeah, you know, <laughs> ship up or sh ship out or whatever, you know, kind of thing. And it, it's wild. So, do you, when people come to you, what state are they in? Are they already at a point where they're like, yeah, we fight about the kids all the time. You know, we can't can't see eye to eye on anything. We're fighting about money. What? Well, what kind of things usually do people, what's the trigger point where people reach out to you to do this deeper work? Well, I work with the whole spectrum. So I do have like a couple that I worked with. They're like, we fight every day. And mm -hmm. so I've worked with them. But what really, what really lights me up is working with people who have a view for legacy. And they realize without even talking to me that their marriage is about more than just their marriage. Like their marriage is about their children. It's about the legacy they're leaving in the community that they're in. And they just really want to optimize their marriage because they know that the power of influence and the power that they can um, create and they want to co-create together. They really want to do something beyond just uh, like one plus one equaling two. They want to do that co-creation that's like quantum. You know, one plus one is more like 11, right? Um, so those are the people that are really drawn to me or people who want to optimize their relationships. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I also, I also work with people one-on-one, -on -one, not only with couples. So a lot of the people that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, I'm actually trauma informed and aware. I'm not a trauma coach, but I do tend to get a lot of people coming to me that are, they're stuck and they, they need some deep transformation and coming back home to their heart like they don't even know who they are and they're they just can't figure out well who am I anyway and I work with people like that one-on-one -on -one quite a bit too mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see so 
Yeah, I mean, it doesn't it start, yeah, do you do, so the work, isn't it around the relationship with themselves first? Like a lot of the relationship work is that way, right? I mean. Always. Right. <laughs> always. Right, right, always. So um, do, do your clients come to you and they already know that probably they're, you know, at least partially responsible for what's going on? Are they that uh, advanced or are they coming in already blaming the other person full on? <laughs> a mixture of both, a mixture of both. <laughs> okay. Like, okay. They're willing to take responsibility, but often they can't discern. They're like, I know I created this, but I don't like, how did I create this? I didn't want a mess, right? Nobody wanted to create a mess. So they're like, I get that maybe I did, but I have no idea how. Mm -hmm. And then we start to un, like, unravel those threads and connect the dots, right? It's pretty powerful. So in your own journey, we, we touched on it quickly. Uh, um, maybe it would help people uh, to hear your journey a little bit more. So for you, what were some of your blind spots that you didn't see that you're being triggered by? Um, I don't know if it was isolated mostly with the kids or was other relationships, if it was also with your husband, or what were some of your blind spots, things you didn't realize? Oh my, there could be, uh, there's several like themes, right? So definitely one of the themes was my gender, being a woman, and I'm a pretty driven person. And being a woman in the church and having a more conservative background, I really struggled with feeling like internally, it felt like I had one foot on the brakes and one foot on the accelerator all the time. And there was just this constant tug of war. Like, I can't be myself. I'm not allowed to be me. What's wrong with me? Uh, so there's definitely that theme. And I had, I had an epiphany. I'll just share this. I don't share it frequently, but I'll just go ahead and share it. Um, when I was in the middle of doing some inner healing, one of those times where I was, I felt like I was just communing with the divine Holy Spirit. And I, I felt like God was just holding my heart and began to squeeze. It was almost like a blackhead coming out, but he's, he like squeezed. And in my, in, I was envisioning a stone coming out of my heart about the size of my thumb a black obsidian stone. And there were three of them that came out, three beliefs. One was I would be a better wife if I was a man. And the other one was I would be a better mother if I was a man. And the last one was I would be a better Christian if I was a man. So there's definitely like deep rooted um, stories and beliefs that were so deep in my subconscious around that theme. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was a huge theme that uh, applied and was like enmeshed in my marriage, my motherhood, my ministry, obviously. And there were other themes too, but that's the one that comes top of mind to me right now. Wow. I mean, that's powerful because there's, um, I mean, a lot of people carry various types of shame, right? I mean, uh, I know a, a lot of women, you know, run into that. Um, if we do split, you know, uh, split it out a little bit, but like um, the amount of women that carry all this deep shame is considerable. I mean, it's it, it, it's for real. Um, and yeah, just the whole idea of, I guess, yeah, it, but depending on the, you know, how your upbringing has been, what you've been exposed to, you could think like, well, I'm totally inferior. I'm a woman. Like it's, Right. I mean, like that was, it sounds like that's the conditioning that you had received. Uh, right. Like many, many it. people. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Consciously, like right. it wasn't a, but unconsciously, like I felt it and I, I moved that way in the world. Mm -hmm. right? I was constantly looking for permission mm -hmm. and expecting other people to give me permission, outsourcing my power, outsourcing. Like you tell you tell me if I can do what I want to do here. Like, like my essence needed to have permission. It's crazy. Right, right. Um, yeah, like yeah, exactly. And then the people pleasing is always big. Again, men and women, but if we just leave it with women, because um, you know, again, it's the same and it's different. So like there's 
as long as you're happy, then we'll be fine. Like, did, did you have that syndrome too? <laughs> yeah, like it's my job to take care of the my husband, my job to take care of, you know, take care of people, yeah. right? right? And then you layer upon that from, from many women, not all, but for many women, there is some degree of trauma in their past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For many women, there's some sexual trauma. So you layer sexual trauma on top of the gender, just the angst of, of the, the collective consciousness around gender, even layer sexual trauma on top of that. You start to get a really gnarly package, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah, and then people uh, go like a, a grab bag term as I feel unworthy, right? Like that's, uh, to me, that's like a grab bag to, okay, that's, the surface okay but what's really driving this thing that a lot of people say i'm not worthy um and i guess into the deep shame and um just feeling like no, nothing's ever good enough right i'm never good enough many many women i know experience that like many 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 women experience it's never enough you never you never uh it's funny because there's there's parts in the self-help industry or motivational industry that 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 really go after that they're like you're, you're right you're not good enough you need to keep <laughs> getting better right? <laughs> you're right that's actually true you're not worthy because you're not good enough yet uh, make something of yourself no it's kind there, of interesting right there's a whole lot of masculine energy like do better yeah. get shit done yeah. right you're like pressing and you like a mom like i tried so hard to use those daily planners but when you've got children you're interrupted all the time it's just like it could not work for me. Mm -hmm. no. I'll give you one more piece that was layered on for me. And it may not be for, well, it's obviously not for some people, but for many it is, is the Judeo-Christian like perception of God th that for me, what I heard was God doesn't want to see me. He only wants to see Jesus. So if I'm me, I'm bad, I'm evil, Right. So I'm trying to, at some level, like I'm at war with myself in order to please God. And mm -hmm. I don't believe that that is what the Bible teaches now. I've completely like shifted that. Mm -hmm. But that's what I grew up with. And that you know, I'm in my 20s. I'm starting to have kids into my 30s. And I'm trying to perform to please God by killing my, like he must increase, I must decrease. <laughs> Scripture from what um, John the Baptist said about Jesus. It's like it wasn't working for me. It's so funny too because I find some of the people, some of the people that have the biggest shame are are women that come from these kind of uh, whether it's Catholic or whatever, but those type of Christian roots where those ideas are so strong, you know, like gotta be with Jesus, you know, or whatever, like all those things, and then like, well, Jesus looks like a guy, and you know, God looks like a guy, or, you know. Like, you know, even at that level, like subconsciously, it's got to, and then Eve, oh, Eve was the bad one, you know, <laughs> that's what caused this whole problem in the first place. <laughs> oh, what shame that would bring to the collective of women, you know, it's, it's, it really is, it's, 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 a, it's a travesty, but uh, it's been what it has happened. I mean, it is just a, um, a fact, but then, you know, once you wake up to what's happening and it, it, it's your opportunity to address it and to uh, heal and to transcend these uh, these programs that we've uh, been given. So how do you help people to do that? Like, how do you help people? Do you, uh, I know you have, uh, you, you talked to me when we talked, you know, before this interview, you talked about you have like one of your programs, I believe you said you have five pillars and that's it. So is there a process you take people through? And if so, what is that process? Well, I do have some curriculum that I take people through, but at the core of everything, the person I'm working with is the curriculum, yeah. is their stories, their beliefs, their context, their their cultural and family, their family culture of family of origin and their upbringing. But everybody has belief systems. Um, my my friend Paul Martinelli calls them our BS, our belief systems, and they often are our BS, right? Mm -hmm. So I help people uncover those unconscious belief systems and I help them reprogram them. I help people uncover the drama that they're dancing in, victim, villain, hero, 
and everybody dances in drama as part of the human condition. But when you become aware of it, you become conscious of it, then it's so empowering because when you're in drama, you're disempowered. It's fear-based and it drives you. Like Jung said that until the unconscious becomes conscious, it drives your life and you call it fate, right? So the drama is like driving you when you become aware of it. Then I give people tools to shift out of drama and what I call the empowered love wheel, which is the opposite of drama. Or like, if you think of a scale of consciousness, drama is down low and empowered love is up high. And like, how do we get here? Right. Mm -hmm. And then I have tactics. I, I teach people how to communicate, how to authentic communication and to make clear agreements. And so the whole spectrum of like shifting core beliefs, inner transformation, all the way to tools and tactics, bids for attention, eye statements, eye contact. Um, so th the whole spectrum mm -hmm. is like a coaching program when you're doing one of my group coaching programs. Mm -hmm. And then I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, the same thing is just more specialized to them one-on-one, -on -one, right? Mm -hmm. Tailor fit to mm -hmm. their context. Yeah. yeah. My, Mm, go ahead. My, what I do with couples is very exclusive and I only work with one at the most two couples at a time. And so it is very much tailored to the couple. I have curriculum, but it's very um, targeted and like in their context, what do they need and how can I coach them? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I know you, yeah, you do some group work with people and, and all that as well. So um, now, uh, yeah, you definitely are, you know, qualified. I mean, again, after all the work you've done with yourself and being married for 58 years, do I have that right here or no? 30. 30. <laughs> I like, it seems like that. I was like, I think that's a three <laughs> instead of five. Okay. I'm not so, quite that old. <laughs> like, no, I'm not old in that one. I'm not that old. Okay. So, uh, all right. Okay. I gave you a chance to get another 20 years. But <laughs> so anyway. Um, okay. So, yeah. So, the, the drama. Yeah. Isn't that like kind of one of the biggest things i mean is it kind of square one everybody comes in and draw oh this is happening <laughs> so how do you help people to just like okay get maybe is it is there a mindfulness aspect is it like don't you realize you know i know there's clearing the false beliefs but around the drama but um is there also a deepening awareness of like when they're getting into drama or ways of stop get I watch for drama, no drama, you do the without no drama zone stuff, or I'm just curious. I, I'm I'm in the middle of writing a book right now about, it's the title of the book is going to be Dump the Drama, and right. I'm explaining drama, what is it, and how to shift out of it, so I give multiple tools to shift out of it, um, primarily, you take responsibility, but you also have to surrender what's not your responsibility, so we have to, to to define what are you responsible for because like i can't take responsibility for your thoughts and feelings and actions like what you think about me is not my responsibility right mm. so talk about like women taking care like how much responsibility did i take on for my husband and my children that really wasn't even mine and i'm doing all of this work right and i'm heroing them and in the drama, and I explain this in the drama, they begin to get resentful because I'm keeping them down. I'm I'm filling the space that they should be rising up and filling, right? Mm -hmm. So we unpack all of that. We unpack the dynamics of drama, what it looks like, what it feels like. How do you actually shift? Like, how do you take responsibility? How do you set boundaries? Which I, I have a different take on boundaries. I don't think boundaries are to self-protect. I think boundaries are so that you can keep your heart open. A boundary is to help somebody know where the front door is to your heart. Say, if you want to be connected with me, you speak respectfully. So it's a boundary. I'm not shutting you out because you're being disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I'm just showing you to the door. Mm -hmm. If you want in, you speak respectfully. Mm -hmm. And then my heart can remain open to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we talk about the, those kinds of dynamics. Um, Mm -hmm. how do you surrender like there's a lot 
to surrender and there's layers of surrender like there's i get to surrender things like who the president is right whether or not i hit a red light light in traffic um i get to surrender the price of gasoline Th that's low hanging fruit mm -hmm. but then i get to surrender like some fears that are inside of me identity fears i got to surrender like when my heart was squeezing i got to let go and surrender that story that i would be a better wife if i was a man that was easy for me to let go of by the time I became aware of it. But some of those belief systems are so entrenched and embedded, they feel true. They feel 100% true, even if your head tells you that's not true. So how do you do that dance to untangle that web of attachment so that you can surrender and allow your essence to come forward, right? Mm -hmm. All of that is part of the conversation that I have around dumping the drama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. I mean, I like the boundary thing because, yeah, usually the boundaries, yeah, the connotation for a lot of people is, uh, all right, this is where all the places where I'm a no, and it's all, you know, it sounds like you're, you're only shutting people out. But I would think, you know, um, I would think if we think it through, right? Like actually a strong boundary might allow somebody in deeper, right. right? So tell us about that. How does that happen? Like you said, well, it shows them the door, but how could that maybe help deepen intimacy? Um, I, I could talk about it, but I want to hear you. <laughs> you're, the, well, you're the expert on it. So <laughs> if you, you know, authentically communicate, um, here's a story that's coming up. My it may or may not fit exactly what you're asking, but I came out, I was dressed for church one day and I came out and I asked my husband how I looked and he said, hey, you're fine. So I go back and I change my clothes and I come back out. How's this? Because you're fine. I'm like, <laughs> I can't win here. I yeah. change again. I come out. He says, you're fine. And I'm like, okay, what does fine mean to you? Right. On a scale <laughs> of one to 10. And he's like, oh, eight. I'm like, no, it's two. It's a two. So we start talking about boundaries, and this is where I'm kind of force fitting my story in, but I think the point is here. If he hears me say that's a two, and he knows that the front door to my heart is through respect, mm -hmm. and he respects that, then I trust him. Right. If the next time I say, how do I look? He's like, well, I would say fine, but what I'm saying is, you look ABC, like you're an A, you're put together, you're attractive. And he takes the time and the effort to speak my language. He comes in through that front door. Boy, my heart just opens up even more to him and I trust him even more. And then it, we have a more intimate relationship. Right. Connection. I think that's why some people say all the all the good guys are either taken or gay because <laughs> because uh you know so, you know the stereotype of gay people you know gay guys or whatever it is that they're they will they would talk about the, well you look you look so pretty in this way and that way and, uh, <laughs> it's so nice right and uh they, you know uh, it's a stereotype I suppose but uh, there's some reality to it I suppose too. But uh, uh, yeah, those skills are the nice. Reality of being emotionally available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like, what I was saying is the guys aren't used to. Uh, a lot of guys don't know how to do it. You know, they need training. Like, uh, what do you want? All I know is you look fine. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's all they know to say. <laughs> but then, when you learn the tools to communicate authentically, you can tell your husband what you want and right. your husband can listen reflectively you say oh fine means two to you so that would be a reflective listening i say no it's a two and you say oh fine means two to you mm -hmm. he's reflecting that back i suddenly feel heard yeah and there's a connection because he reflected back to me my words right, right? right. and we can learn those skills they're not rocket science they really aren't this is fascinating. Of course, we could take a lot of time talking about this stuff. Yeah. Um, but one more thing I do want to just follow up on that is to say, uh, yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, do you find uh, maybe it's not so true with the people come to you? I don't know. Do on the guy side, do they often they don't know how to be more expressive and share their feelings and everything, right? That, that's usually their issue often, not always, but um so so do you find sometimes they're like come on, why does it even matter? You know, I have to go on and on and get to be so detailed and do these little things and everything. You ever find guys that uh, the guys come in at all with that attitude or are most of them pretty receptive and able to, oh, because I, another, I mean, I do see some, I'm wondering, because I would think either they could be like that or they could be like, a lot of men are just like, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Okay, whatever makes things well. <laughs> So that resistance might be there for until one event. And when they do, for instance, a reflective listening and mm -hmm. they see the shift in their wife, they're like, oh my gosh, this works. Right, right. <laughs> so, right? right. And if they continue to be resistant to certain things, like maybe the tone of wife, I'm thinking of an example, the wife feels bossy to them and they don't want to be controlled and told what to do. Almost always it goes back to how did mom treat you mm. and dealing with a little bit of trauma here. Mm. So like maybe their slider is up around six or seven before they even inter interact with their wife because of the trauma from childhood. Or maybe it's at two. It doesn't matter if we can heal this. It brings the whole thing down. And then they can interact with their wife in a way that's much more um, correlated to the situation. Like. Okay a five response is more correlated than a 10 response in that mm -hmm. context. So if there's resistance, what I'm saying is if there's resistance, there's a reason. And part of the work we do is figuring out what the reason is and right. addressing it, right? But mostly if there's resistance, it doesn't last more than just a session or two when they see a difference and they're like, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all in. I yeah. want to see those results. Yeah, <laughs> it's working. Let's do it, right? Um, unless, and you probably don't attract a lot of these type of people. Uh, in this case, I'll say the guy is so into just themselves that they just they don't fully care. There's like just, just, just get, you need to just change. Just get over it. Maybe you just see her. You know, like <laughs> I don't want to do the work, right? <laughs> People aren't interested in legacy. Yeah, They're yeah, not yeah, speaking yeah. my language. So I seldom attract people on that narcissistic yeah. spectrum. Yeah, yeah. I do attract people coming out of those situations to work with one-on-one. -on -one, right? okay. okay, right, right. Oh my God, how could I ever be with anybody again? if they're going to even potentially be like that, right? So, yeah. um, okay. And it's also like, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Right, right, right. Right, because they were wrong all the time. And that exactly. Really, yeah, yeah. yeah. They make, like crazy making gaslighting, they call it, and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I always have such compassion for everybody. I'm like, well, what about those narcissists? They've got a reason why they're narcissistic, right? But that's a whole nother show. We won't get into that today. But um, everybody, I feel like everybody gets a bad name sometimes. <laughs> it's like, okay, but let's get, I always want to dig into it. Let's find the reason. Let's see if we can, you know, let's see if we can, you know, shift that, you know, whatever it is. Right. And oh, they're just narcissists to hell with them, you know, like <laughs> all that stuff. But yeah, but so anyway, um, yeah, there's a lot, uh, a lot going on, and the whole idea too of, well, you attracted this this person in your life for some perfect reason, right? <laughs> Learning to embrace that, right? Um, and 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 the people that work with you, uh, um, they usually are, they're thinking legacy. They're probably are they often well off financially at all, or are they those type of people, or who comes to you? Well, typically not necessarily very wealthy but mm -hmm. they have enough to invest because it is an investment and mm -hmm. it is exclusive i am only working with them and so right. that exclusive exclusivity does mm -hmm. have a higher price tag yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah. honestly the people that i work with they're not necessarily wealthy they just see the value and they figure it out yeah yeah okay 
Okay, so let's dig in. Let's let's dive in and do some uh, uh, you know business analysis and uh, energy scanning and stuff on it. So um, I already have some of your your information from our first uh, conversation. Um, so you're only working with like one or two clients at a time as far as couples, and then you have you have some one to ones on top of that, right? About, about five at a time, three to five at a time. Okay, three to five, and then you have a group. How many people are in your group? I was curious. Like, I'll run a co cohort of 10 to 12 people at a time. And what do you do in that group again? It's the five pillars of relationship um, mastery, and it's the whole spectrum. We start with dump the drama, and we go all the way through to the tactics. Mm -hmm. okay. And there's coaching, uh, weekly call group coaching, and um, the VIP upgrade has some one-on-one -on -one calls with me as well. Where do you get your clients? How do they come? Do they come through referral mostly or do do how do they come to you? Um, some referral. Mm -hmm. Often I I am very I'm active on Facebook and I post about my life. I'm just I'm transparent, vulnerable. People know like and trust me and they would often just reach out to me through a DM, say, "Hey, I read this post. I think I need to work with you." I would say Probably 50% of my clients at least have come that way. Mm. And then word of mouth and referral. You know, that's so great. I mean, uh, a lot of times we get all negative uh, people on the social media and like, look at how much business and how much good it's doing. You know, it's uh, it, it's pretty phenomenal. Wow. I mean, it's so easy. All I have to do is do some posts and people DM me and everything. And, you know, that. As you probably are, you know, providing some really, um, you're very authentic and connected. Um, and so when you, you post, people feel, um, they feel that. And then it's good information, I'm sure. And, you know, so they're like, wow, you could probably help me, you know. And, mm -hmm. and so then they reach out to you. Now, do you ask them to contact you or they just, or, you, or do you ever make invitations for people to contact you or not so much? Once in a while, I'll I'll do once in a while. I'll say if this is you, DM me. Okay. okay. But not all the time. It's just kind of just I'll just sprinkle it in occasionally. Hmm. If I said I could send you uh, an extra twenty percent of clients right now, would you be able to really integrate them? Uh, like if they're one to ones, groups, 20, 50 percent. I don't know if we were even go to fifty percent, twenty to fifty percent more. Would you be able to take them in, or are you gonna be like, oh my god, I don't know if I can handle it. 50% more, I would have to go to group coaching. I would launch a second or a third cohort, which I am primed to do that. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do 50% more one-on-ones mm -hmm. and I would not want to do more than at the very most three couples at a time. So mm -hmm. I couldn't do 50% more couples. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I have one, right now I, I have one phasing in and one kind of, yeah. right? So I could take on one or two more couples right, right now but right. I could take on three or four. I wouldn't right. go on a waiting list. I could run some couples through a group coaching program, but I have I am not as satisfied with that group coach coaching for couples. It just doesn't seem to get the results that I like. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. So my answer is qualified. Yes, I'm set up to take on more clients mm -hmm. um, with some caveats. Right. Right. So it sounds like, yeah, like, like all of us, really, I mean, your leverage is to expand is going to be groups. I mean, in terms of numbers of people and whatnot, do you really want to grow your business? Are you like, do you, you're coming out with a book um, that's going to, you know, could potentially bring in, you know, new people to work with you. Right. So um, are you looking to grow and, um, you know, how much do you want to grow? Like on a scale of one to 10, how much do you're looking for your business to grow? In terms of more clientele, maybe 10 to 20%. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I do want to grow the group coaching to probably running, I'll run one cohort this year. I would like to run four or four to six next year. Mm -hmm. And I can do some simultaneously. I've already got some things in place to help me support that. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, I'm pretty happy with the balance that I have because I'm still homeschooling my kids mm -hmm. and 
I want to take on some speaking gigs and I want to continue writing. So I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying, okay, what's it going to take for me to, you know, make mega dollars. I'm not looking for mega right. dollars. I'm looking for adding value and right. making a difference. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see what's possible because yeah, you don't want to overwhelm yourself. Uh, um, you know, you hit because uh, you're an integrity person, you know, if you start, you started to overwhelm yourself, like, you know, your effectiveness, you know, it starts to dip and then that would be completely unacceptable for you. So, uh, <laughs> where it's not for everybody. I mean, some people are just like, whatever, I mean, I need to, I want to make more money. So, uh, it'll have to work somehow, you know, and they just, they just launch themselves into it anyway. So I appreciate that. Um, I definitely, um, strive to be that person and I think I'm doing that pretty well, but, <laughs> but, uh, humbly I say, so yeah, just to get behind uh, the people you can and, and do your best with that. Well, let's see where the leverage might be for you. Uh, and then also I'll just do an overall energy scan of your system um and see what i pick up to support you and your maybe your business and your life and there's untapped gifts potentials directions all those things so we'll take 10 or more minutes to just do some tuning now audience remember make sure you very present because things i say you'll say oh my god that's exactly what i needed to hear right it happens all the time okay make sure you really tune in and uh, as we go through this process. Now, usually I just go through the whole thing and then I have you reflect back to me. So um, so if you could just listen in, if you wanna take notes, you can, um, Candena, um, or you know, however you wanna do it, but I'm gonna just go right in now, if that's okay, if you're ready. Yep. Okay, all right, so here we go. So they're showing me like they're, they're saying like you're sitting on a gold mine. So let's see what that's about. Let's see what that's about. Well, one of the things they're showing me is like how resourceful you are. You know, you like. When people come to you with a problem, you're you're good at knowing like where they can go get help. Um, and it's not always just in your area, like like, oh, here's a book you could read. Oh, here's a thing you could do. Um, so you're really a resourceful person. You'd be like, you know, if you wanted to do like <laughs> social work or something, you'd be good at it just because you'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, I know a resource for that, a resource for this. So you're very resourceful. So so uh, there's something about that. Let's see what else comes through. Now they're also showing me, um, well, and I'll get to the answer what this gold mine is all about eventually. We'll get there. But like, I'm also getting like, I'm getting the that tension and that um, maybe even anger and agitation you could have when when you're clear with somebody and they still don't get it like as skilled as you are and as knowledgeable as you you could still sometimes be like i'm telling you this like come on what are you <laughs> after is people i feel don't listen like um i'm not saying you do that with your clients uh i don't think so but like in your personal life like i'm telling you this it's this uh okay i mean, like so I see that. So, um, so I'm just seeing that in the system. They're showing me that. Yeah, and I see how, and, and and I'm not here to try to make anybody feel bad, but like I, th I think in the past, and again, I'm sure we've got much better with that pattern, but um, in the past, like people would be like, okay, maybe I won't come to ask her about things so much. <laughs> So, and again, I don't think this is your clients. I think it's more people in your personal life, okay? Um, and it, yeah, I'm not saying it happens all the time either. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, they're just, they're just showing me your boys and they're just like, um, I just get... Uh, how many of your children are boys versus girls? So just to answer that. Four girls. Okay. Um, 
So sort of even. Um, Yeah, I'm just hearing you've done a really good job, you know, of course, overall. And then with those, with the girls, like, I'm just feeling like, and like, mostly I feel like they feel like you've really transmitted, like they're free to be themselves. Like, you know, that, that you really help them deeply with that. Um, that's really beautiful. Um, I do get something about, I don't know if it's one or more of the boys, but like, like they they they're so grateful for you and the and, and sometimes they're like well, I'm not quite sure what to make a mom sometimes or something like there's something about that I'm not quite sure what to make of her sometimes so um does she want this or does she want that you know like sometimes they there's there's something going on with that okay um like I say I just share what comes through so sometimes it's business sometimes it's some few other things um Yeah, so is in terms of the business versus the family, yeah. So you have uh, there's sort of sort of a, a integration, but a split at the same time. You know, like I got my business and I got the, and you know, I would say like our our kids uh, and sometimes our spouses and whatnot. Like uh, when we have spouses, it's like you know they're like clients. You know, and we have to we're giving them all this attention and energy and. They're part of our our caseload or whatever kind of thing, and so because um, especially with you, you care so much and you want to do whatever you can and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just, they're just showing me that, and then yeah, I just really think you've got a gold mine, and that you could really, I know, like not all this work is completely original, and that you've learned it, uh, pieces from other people, but I'm just getting something about something about. Uh, you got through some of your insecurities like I could see you stand in your power to there's maybe some aspects of your work that are transferable to others that are unique enough that aren't like maybe just only your training or maybe that's coming later I don't know for sure but I just get like there you could be the time you could license other people to do the work so uh, I know you're a trainer yourself and whatnot, I think is in your bio, but um, I don't know. I just feel like maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm incorrect, but like, I feel like it it might be like doing, like learning how to be a, more skilled in doing this work and then specific, could be some of the um, techniques or some of the processes. I'm hearing yes on that, okay. So there's some things that you could license on people I keep hearing something about royalties too. So let me see what that's about. Could be, it could be like if you're giving people like training courses, like if they're, if certain, certain training courses and X gets sold or whatever. Okay. So there's like royalties like, uh, uh, attached to sales of like training courses. Now, this is all very raw, you know, these downloads. Um, you know, if we were, Doing a full session, eventually, you know, we may not get to it today. We would talk about that more in depth and figure out what the heck is you're talking about, what is that, and then flesh it out. Um, so I'm just hearing that. So there's a lot of leverage in terms of other people being the sales force and facilitators rather than it being you. So there's that opportunity for you going forward. May not happen overnight, of course, to, to let all these things happen, but in two to four years, totally. Okay, let's see what else is next. Yeah, because you're definitely, I'm sure if we looked at charts, you know, human design or all these different things out there, you'd be like hand analysis, you'd be a teacher of teachers and all that sort of stuff. So you're totally meant to do that sort of thing. Um, let's see what else I'm picking up on. I just want to look through the energy at the top of the system. Um, you're connected with source you know, you're like, hello, I'm here, or whatever, like, I'm just saying, like, a breathing energy and consciousness, it's like, hello, I'm here, um, and you know you're provided for, you know you have trust and faith, but some of it is connected energy, but some of it is, like, just mentally, you know you're provided for, um, but sometimes you're like, 
again, you, some of it's historical. I get you're better than ever before, but like some of it's like, what the hell? Come on. Like <laughs> that's kind of an overall pattern in life, like with, with God and source and relationships, like, come on, what's happening? Finally, let's go. You know, so you have a lot of patience till you don't. And then you're very impatient. That's what I hear. Like, um, and it may not last. You might be like, bah, and then you'll calm down, but it's like, where is this? You know? And um, so, yeah, so I just see some disconnection there in the trust factor sometimes, um, not, not in everything at all, but um, there's aspects. Um, and, but yeah, you have a lot of, you know, I'm seeing with the writing, you can be really good with writing and articulating things and uh, being straightforward with people, straight shooter, um, real, um, obvious, that's all obvious from the interview even, but um, when we talk about like your brow or third eye energy, when we go there, um, feel heaviness. So um, I think there's a sense of still like I need, need to do more a little bit. So I need to try harder. And so that'll create some pressure in the third eye of trying to figure out like, what do I still not know? You know, um, let me get better. Let me get better. Let me get better. Um, whereas if we remove some of that, then you would have even stronger um, more connected, consistent intuition that would um, be uh, allow you to be more effective in everything. Like it'd be uh, even better. But you know, like this idea of like I need to know more versus just what you know, like as a knower, a deep knower, and not a, you know wisdom keeper, and leaning even further into what a wisdom keeper you are seems to be a a, a great place to grow. Um, Okay, I mentioned the throat briefly. Um, you're pretty good at, uh, you know, you're pretty good at owning your worth. Although I'm losing my my voice and breath um, right now, so that means there's something with that. Um, um, yeah, vulnerability. Um, Nose, maybe they're hurting. Maybe this is a squeeze for them. You know, you're so concerned, <laughs> caring and concerned for people. Um, and I keep there. She keeps showing me uh, like you're being pregnant with a baby or that representation, and you know, we've got kids to feed or something. It's the next thing I'm hearing. We got kids to feed. We got more on the way, probably even. And then, am I provided for? You know, now I'm hearing like at a more personal level. Like, am I provided for? Am I taken care of? And where's my help? I oh, I shouldn't even worry about that. And you know, so then you would you know the past would have been you would have judged that. So these are old patterns. But you also are just so sensitive to what other people's needs are. And so, so usually you're really good at just holding the line on 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 things in the business, probably. But um, part of you just really, uh, you know, may over give as a result of how much they're investing in your perception. Like, oh, they're investing a lot. I better really bring a lot. And, and, um, I'm getting it's not always completely balanced for you. Sometimes it, it, it dips over, it gets into some overgiving. Um, yeah, and you can reset that, but yeah, there's some issues there. Um, more groups, yeah, as we go through the chakras, I'm just feeling into that. Um, yeah, that just seems like, yeah, okay, maybe. Um, uh um yeah get guided down into your like sacral chakra um i really get the book really strong and the speaking is really strong so i really see you amping up with that with the, the energy is really strong and you know through these books like again you could be enrolling people to want to learn more from you to be facilitators of this sort of work um yeah is that okay hold on okay so in the lower power center area there too like somewhere in there there is sort of some programs around like hey maybe we're good enough let's just chill out let's just let it be the way it is uh yeah you you have a burning desire to share so much more so there's there's some conflict there um part of me wants to anchor um continue to just be that anchor at home and that space for everybody and 
of course, for the clients as well. But um, and another part of you is like, I'm going to expand and grow and sort of get out there. And I see some conflicts in there a little bit. Um, yeah, it's pretty good heart energy overall, for sure. Of course, amazing hearts. Um, yeah, this day over give thing keeps showing up. Um, and then, um, yeah, I mean, you're a pretty grounded person. I mean, so you've got some grounding there. Um, the wounding, though, I see there, so that would make you want to retreat sometimes. So this is where you might shut down or want to run away. Um, again, way better, I'm sure, on these things, but like I just see that like maybe it led to some depression or some certain habits in the past, like to try to comfort yourself. Um, and then you would judge yourself for that too. And okay. Um, okay. It's sort of, yeah, that program um, of the past is like, as long as I judge myself really harshly, then I, maybe I've corrected it now. <laughs> if whatever shortcomings you thought you had. Um, again, all has changed a lot, but these old patterns die die hard, right? They're still around. They're not like completely disappeared. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things we could go on about, but we have so much time today. So um, anyway, I'll just pause there and get some feedback from you on what was coming through. I think there's some seedling uh, ideas in there that could be pretty cool. So yeah, so what's coming up for you as I share all that? I'm really excited about the the gold mine and the idea of the licensing and the leveraging for that. That's a new idea. It had not even occurred to me before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'd had a conversation earlier this week about the book I'm writing and it being pieces from so many other people that I'm like, I'm genius at synthesizing information. And so you're, you seem to be reflecting that back. And I'm like, okay, that was very confirming for me. Um, so lost my husband eight, 19 months ago. So all of what you're sharing, I'm like, oh, wow, this is awesome. I think like it's really affirming to me that I've shifted through a lot of the grief. I've shifted through a lot of the stories about that, stories about being alone, being a single parent. And um, and of course there, of course there's conflict there. Like I do want to be present for my kids, even when we were a two-parent home and especially now, right? And so, but I want to travel and I want to expand. And so, yeah, there is a little bit of a tug of war for sure going on there and finding that, threading that needle of what's aligned. And what I was hearing from you is that like, I'm mostly kind of finding it. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that, that feels really good to me, very affirming. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of wisdom keeper, ooh, that really resonates, resonates deeply that's a theme that I keep returning to like over the years not just months but like years as a, a life theme I would say um, like leaning into that I, I think that was very encouraging yeah the the in the different things that you talk about talked about oh people I don't know if people what they say about me but I do know that I can be really intense and I think that intensity can scare people sometimes and I right. shoot I, I shoot straight so <laughs> yeah, right. it's a big love bug at the same time so I, I would say if you, you're full on with both you'll be fine but yeah if you lean too much one way or the other either you're kind of like this like oh you know like uh like watery mess, I want to say, kind of energy, or you're just like a uh, total, like, whoo, like, <laughs> you know, go to one extreme or the other. But when it's blended together, then you're just right. You know, everything works. So then you can bring the full strength, you can bring the full love, everything's turned on. So, yeah, totally. <laughs> so, yeah, no, there's so many, so many, so many great things here. I, I think, like, really, um, getting the support, you know, uh, 
it's good you have business coaches you know in your family and whatnot too like they can help you with some of these things like um i help with certain things but I, you know i i wouldn't you know know the ins and outs necessarily licensing and royalties and stuff like that it's not particularly my uh you know as specialty area but um but yeah i mean those things you know uh are things you want to find out about but i think yeah if you have some some good advisors in your life and in your business uh, especially is what i'm saying then they can help guide and direct you and help put certain pieces together, but they have to be, you know, people you really trust. You can't just, hey, I'll pay people, help me out. You know, it can't be like, it's gotta be trusted advisors that are, whether, whether they're agents or whatever, you know, consultants, whatever, but um, I'm feeling like that's gonna be really helpful to you um, <clears throat> because you're, you know, you're, you're meant to do this work, but, uh, uh, you're not uh you know this isn't like you know you're a factory owner i mean you know you, we can all do anything but um you're not like that kind of business owner you know you're you're in this for the love you're in this for the impact and the evolution and you're a practitioner person more than you are like a hardcore business owner you know i'm not i'm not disrespecting you as a business owner but i'm just saying like myself include like I don't see myself as a true entrepreneur. You know, I talk about being an entrepreneur, but, you know, I came to a conclusion recently. I'm like, I'm not really an entrepreneur. That's that's BS. I'm a business owner, but, you know, so like really seeing who you are, your wisdom keeper. I mean, that's a core of who you are and you get to monetize it though, right? And then we call it a business, but having business advisors around, not because you're not smart enough, but because we all need help is a great idea for you to have the right people, whoever they may be, um, to be there to support you in this uh, endeavor. So anyway, I, I'd like to go on, but we're gonna need to uh, uh, start, you know, uh, wrapping things up a little bit. Um, now I should have said that because people might leave the program. Guys, there's the best is yet to come. Uh, uh, um, so, Kandina, um, uh, we can talk more offline about any of this, certainly. Um, but yeah, I would love for you now to share uh, with everybody, you know, now they know how awesome you are even more, like how they can reach out to you if they want to, um, to, you know, uh, maybe get some support. Maybe they have relationship stuff that they want to, you know, or at least follow you on Facebook, et cetera. So how can they you know, tell them more about that? Yeah, so the best way to get close to my fire is to follow me on Facebook and then join my private Facebook group, group mm -hmm. My Infinite Heart. And I drop links in some of my posting occasionally. So if you just look at my name on Facebook and get, send me a friend request, and um, that's the best way. But I do have a website as well. And you can find my books on Amazon, Kendana K. I've got one kissing with eyes wide open is the memoir that I published last year and um dump the drama will be dropping I believe in end of August mm -hmm. if I can hit the deadline for publishing <laughs> <laughs> okay right uh, it depends yeah it depends on you in that regard right so it's coming soon coming soon all right Okay, cool. And uh, everybody, if you want to check me out, go to YourSacredPurpose.com and uh, check out what I what I offer. I have a Rock Your Sacred Purpose, uh, presently titled Rock Your Sacred Purpose Energy Scan Consultation, because we'll take a look at your purpose, take a look at your business. Let's see what wants to happen, how things want to rock. Of course, it'll be something like what you're seeing here, but of course, it's a full session. So we do a lot more discussion, fleshing things out. We might have a full business plan for all I know by the time we're done, or at least part of it. So um, yeah, I totally am dedicated to giving to you during those sessions. And there's an opportunity to talk about doing more with me, but I'm selective. I don't bring, I don't work with everybody. So, but if you want some initial help from me, at least everybody should do it. I think if you're, oh, but only if you're ready to rock, if you're, if you really want to see some shifts. So check that out, the Rock Your Sacred Purpose Energy Scan Consultation, or, hey, if you just want to meditate and make money, get the free meditate and make money meditation. Start meditating and make money today. Get your chakras open. Get your answers from your guides and everything. Do it 
the easy way. Meditate, make money, like billions of other people are now. Not that many yet, but uh, many other people are doing. So check that out at yoursacredpurpose.com. All right. So, uh, Kendina, it's been such a pleasure, of course, to have you on the show. And I'm just so grateful for you being open and willing to come on a show like this and uh, share your awesomeness with us. Thank you so much. This has been delightful and very encouraging. Thank you. Awesome. All right. And for everybody else, keep on tuning in and we'll keep on rocking it here at Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Till the next time. Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Stay tuned for our next upcoming new episodes each Wednesday and Saturday. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us to serve you best. As a reminder, you can get your free Meditate and Make Money meditation at www.yoursacredpurpose.com to rock your sacred purpose. Goodbye for now, everybody.